Well, as promised, this is the second part of a two-part devotional today that is taken from our scripture reading, Exodus chapter 11 and 12. The focus of this devotional will be Exodus chapter 12, and I've titled this video devotional, Behold the Lamb, the Institution and Significance of the Passover. Well, the Passover was instituted in Exodus 12, and it took its name from the Lord sparing his people, Israel, the plague that struck the firstborn of Egypt. The Lord had instructed Moses and Aaron to speak to the people, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year. You shall take it out from sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Exodus 12, verses 2 through 6. Now, the blood of the sacrifice was to be put on the side posts and the lentil, the top of the door facing of the houses of the children of Israel. And the Lord promised in Exodus 12 and verse 12 through 13, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Well, there are specific instructions that were given for the sacrificial lambs. They were, you see, to serve as a reminder that the lambs, all the lambs that went before the cross of Calvary, were a type a picture of the ultimate sacrifice for our sins, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Now, they did not know his name, nor would he come in their time. But they would have to trust in the substitutionary blood that would be on the doorpost of their house and know by faith that it represented God's provision, his sacrifice, his covenant with Abraham. Now, the lamb was to be roasted whole. It was not to be boiled where the bones would be broken in pieces. In fact, the point is made in Exodus 12, verse 8 through 9, not only should it be roasted whole, but that the bones were not to be broken. Now, Jesus Christ's death on the cross fulfilled that condition. We know that not a bone was broken. Now, Christ was the perfect, sinless, spotless. In the words of John the Baptist, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John 1, 29. You know, there's another element of the Passover that we find here, and it's unleavened bread. Now, leaven is somewhat the equivalent of yeast today. And it was not to be used in bread during the Passover season. The leaven was used in ancient times. The leaven used in ancient times was from dough that had fermented, left over from a day or the day before that, and it was left over from the previous day. Well, women, housewives, would take a pinch of the fermented dough, just a pinch, and would knead it into a fresh batch of flour that they were preparing to bank. The result of that would be that that little pinch of leavened dough would permeate the whole dough and cause the bread to rise. It is the permeating nature of leaven that is a symbol in the scriptures of the nature of sin. In actuality, sin in our lives functions the same way as leaven and dough. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, Galatians 5 and verse 9. In the same way that leaven was not to be in the Passover bread, we are not to tolerate even a little sin in our lives. Well, that brings us to Exodus 12, 29 through 34, and what we know as the night of the Passover. Well, the night of the Passover came, and at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh to the captives in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. Pharaoh and all Egypt, as you might imagine, cried in anguish, 
And we read in Exodus 12 and verse 30, For there was not a house where there was not one dead. Well, the king sent immediately for Moses and Aaron, and he charged them, Rise up, get ye forth from among my people, both ye, the children of Israel. Go, serve the Lord as you have said, and take your flocks and your herds as you have said. Be gone, and bless me also, Exodus 21, 12, 31-32. Now, it was that same urgency that took hold among the Egyptians. And they urged Israel to depart out of the land in haste. For they said, We be all dead men. As God had commanded, the children of Israel required and demanded of the Egyptians jewels of silver and gold and even raiment. The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And they lent them as they had required. We read, in fact, Exodus 12, 36, and they spoiled the Egyptians. Well, 30, 37 through verse 51 is that moment of deliverance out of Egypt. 430 years has passed since Israel has been in Egypt. And now they are to be thrust out of Egypt. And the people began their exodus with 600,000 people. Men. Now that doesn't include women and children, and so we must assume that the number was easily in excess of 1.2 million Jews that went up out of Egypt. We also read in Exodus 12 and verse 38 that there was a mixed multitude who went out with them. Now these were not of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. They did not have an inheritance in the promised land. They were non-Hebrew people. And we'll see later in Numbers that those mixed multitudes that took advantage of the opportunity of fleeing Egypt's slavery, they would be a curse to Israel. Well, Israel's stay of 430 years has ended. And we read in Exodus 12, 41, at the, on that very same day, God delivered Israel out of the land. Well, the ex Exodus from Egypt and the sparing of the firstborn were memorialized in a perpetual observance of what you and I know in the scriptures as the Passover. There was an additional sign that had been given to Abraham, circumcision of the males, and that would continue as a sign of that nation's consecration to the Lord. In fact, we read in Exodus 12 and verse 49, this understanding, whether Hebrew or the mixed multitude, there would be one law that would serve the people. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of today's second devotional. And a reminder regarding the leaven that God is intolerant of sin in the lives of his people. In fact, you and I should be searching out daily in our hearts whatever sin that might be there and confess it. And I close with a verse. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 6, Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. God bless you, my friend. I hope to join you tomorrow, and I pray that these things that we've studied will be an encouragement to you as we enter into the celebration of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. God bless, and bye-bye.